Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Michelle and today I want to talk to you about what happens when you can't afford certain curriculums, homeschooling curriculums. If you're new here, I homeschool my two oldest children, my nine and a half, five and, five and a half year old daughter. This is our second year of homeschooling. And I think on YouTube, social media, we get a lot of videos talking about the curriculums we're using and I love those videos and I think they're really helpful, but I think we also need to talk about that there are curriculums that we cert we can't use for budgetary reasons. And I share a link up above um, our budget, our homeschool budget and how that works. And I think a lot of people talk about how you can homeschool on a very small budget or it doesn't have to cost less. And I think that can be applicable to certain situations, of course. But there are times when you have to spend money and it can be difficult if you are living within a certain budget to meet certain things. So this is not a video, you know, tips to save money or anything like that. It's just a video to talk about the feelings of not being able to afford certain curriculums. So I'll kind of go over where we're coming from before I talk about that. So we are a single income family by choice. My husband works, I stay at home with the children. Like I said, we live within a budget. We have the normal expenses I think most people have, mortgage, utilities, things like that. I do, my husband and I do have a pretty substantial amount of student loan debt as well, so we pay that as well in, in our monthly budget. But we have always lived in a, you know, below our means, so we can afford to do things like me stay at home with the children. But I would say definitely, in, especially in the last few months with inflation and the prices just going crazy, I've definitely felt the, the tightening of my budget. You know, you, not just our grocery bill, we are a gluten-free family of five because my youngest daughter has celiac disease. So our grocery bill was already astronomical just for that reason. <laughs> but you add inflation prices on that. And you know, we were already paying like $5 for one loaf of gluten-free bread. At inflation, you're paying over $6 now. Now, that is one of the reasons I make my own bread now. But just to give you an idea that as a gluten-free family, we were already paying really high prices for food that has to be labeled gluten-free for my daughter to consume, that inflation has definitely impacted our grocery budget. Inflation has definitely impacted our utilities. One of our utilities got, has gone off like $75. And to some people, that might not make a difference. But like I said, we live on a budget. We are, I would say, middle class for the area we live in. We have a medium household income for the area we live in. I have no problem sharing my husband's income. He makes about, I think, $57,000 a year. And we are a family of five. So to give you an idea of what that is, we don't live in a high cost area. I think one of the problems we encounter is we live in an area, it's a smaller town, so a lot of the gluten-free options aren't available to us. We don't have, you know, a lot of grocery store options, so I oftentimes have to pay the higher price at our local grocery stores than you could maybe find at larger chain stores. But again, the larger stores are over an hour from me, and the gas prices alone to just go to those larger stores wouldn't make up for it. So. We've seen rises in a lot of our budgetary items and we've been able to run that lot way. And now I don't buy homeschool curriculum all at once during the year. We, we homeschool year round. So we're finishing different curriculums at different times. So the way we've done it is we just buy what we need when we need it, which has worked out fine for the past year. But again, we happen to hit this road bump where prices are high, the budget is getting smaller and on top of that we had some household issues go wrong so we had an issue with a pipe in our basement a sewage pipe that we had to obviously immediately for the safety of everyone have repaired that was expensive calling a plumber all that gets expensive then we also had some electrical problems with my vehicle my van so again I need my vehicle to drive so it's something that had to be addressed right away and it's not that you know, savings was enough, but those things really add up and they happen within a week of each other. So we have this shrinking budget, larger expenses coming up. And I think this is normal for most people that these things come up. And I think, especially on social media, there's this kind of shame of not having money or you're not prepared enough when sometimes life just happens and sometimes your savings doesn't cover that. 
So how does that impact your homeschool? Like I said, we've purchased most of our curriculum for the year, but there are some things that we do like subscriptions and stuff like that that are throughout the year or if my kids finish their math curriculum, obviously that gets used on when they need it. So we came to a point in our budget where we had to make some cuts and those cuts, unfortunately, some of them were homeschool related. And I'll talk about some of those homeschool related cuts we had to make. If you noticed in my curriculum videos and my day in the life and all that, I don't mention one of my favorite resources, which is Little Justice Leaders. Now, this is a social justice themed subscription box aimed at children, and I think it's a wonderful resource to use. I'm very disappointed that currently we can't use it because as our subscription came to for renewal, we do three months at a time, and I think it's $130 for three months. So you get a box every month with materials and everything. Again, check out those videos if you want to see more. But $130 really does make a difference in our budget. So I had to make the difficult decision that, although I think it's extremely important and I really hope we get back to it soon, it's not a necessity right now. Same with, there are some human body things, there are some games and some like the layered puzzles I wanted to get, just add-ons add to what we're currently doing that I said, it's not in the budget, we can't do that. There was an art curriculum I came across recently that's looked really amazing, but again, it's a yearly subscription type thing where you pay up front and these hundreds of dollars add up. And for some people, that doesn't make a difference. For some people with larger incomes, a couple hundred dollars, five hundred dollars doesn't make a difference, but for my budget it does. And this is not a video to talk about how the resources make your curriculum. This is not a video to talk about, you know, validation that I'm doing a good job with what I have. This is a video to just validate your feelings when it comes to those points where you can't purchase certain things, where you see the curriculum, you see it portrayed on YouTube or social media, or you come across it yourself and it's amazing, but it does not fit in with your budget and the feelings that accompany that. There's a feeling of, you know, disappointment. There's a feeling of sometimes shame that you're not providing enough for your children. I think as parents, we already get these messages that in order to provide for our children, we have, there's certain expectations we have to meet. And I'm not one of those that, you know, has ever really followed society's ideas of what make a good parent, but that doesn't negate the fact that you still have these feelings and those feelings are valid. That sometimes when you can't afford things for your kids, it makes you feel bad. It makes you feel bad as a person, as a parent. And I think when you add the added layer of homeschooling that you can't provide certain educational materials for your children, it makes you feel bad. And will your children be fine without those? Yes. Will, are there other resources, lots of free resources out there? Yes. Can you make do? Yes. But that does not excuse the feelings that sometimes it comes with that. And I want to just talk about how it's okay to have those feelings of inadequacy, of embarrassment or shame or disappointment that come with not being able to afford certain things. We're not all made of money. We can't have everything we want to and that can be difficult when you're talking about your child's education. And I see some of these curriculums out there that are, you know, not just hundreds of dollars, but almost a thousand dollars. And that's just not realistic for my family or where we're at. And I think that needs to be talked about that there are families living within budgets. There are families that are single income. There are families that are, you know, one parent is doing it themselves or one grandparent is doing them themselves and that it's okay when you come across something and you can't afford it. It doesn't make you a bad teacher or a parent, but to validate your feelings when it comes to that, that it's okay, it's normal to have those feelings. So I just really quick wanted to come on here and talk about how that's how I was feeling. I was feeling down that I couldn't get a lot of the resources that I wanted to because things within my budget, things within the world changed. And part of running, rolling with that roller coaster is dealing with the emotions that come with it and the, in, the feelings of inadequacy that come with it. And that's completely fine. 
you know, my roller coaster will dip back into a different point and there'll be a time, I'm sure, when I can afford different resources and really rely on what I need right now instead of all the extras. But I just wanted to talk to you about that if you were a person <laughs> looking at these videos of the really expensive curriculum or all the curriculum videos and you feel bad, that's, that's okay, that's normal. Comparing ourselves is just something that naturally happens, especially within the homeschooling community. There's so much comparing of resources and kids and things like that, that your feelings are valid. Your feelings are valid when it comes to this. And budgetary money, these are things that also need to be talked about within the homeschooling community, that it's an important thing when we're choosing curriculum. It's an important thing when we're homeschooling. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. Now, thank you for watching.